Alright, I'm working on another print, or my printer is printing uh, another STL file. Um, of course, this will be added to the current 300, or yeah, 3500 STL files uh, printed so far. <coughs> um, as you can see here, in, in, and in all my prints, uh, you can see that I am indeed using a very flat, known to be flat, from the factory, mere tile. And the reason I use that is because it is flat. It's flat all the way across, all the way back, all the way from uh, side to side. And when you do that, then the printer problems of flatness have already been solved. It's, it's already done. So you don't need to have an electronic gizmo attached here and having to deal with it all the time. Uh, you just don't need it and because there is no highs or lows to deal with. You, you don't have to compensate for any of the issues of a non-flat surface. So what I wanted to do is come up with a way for me, because I do print all the time, uh, that I didn't have to deal with you know, putting uh, wedges or any kind of spacers underneath the plate uh, because I, I thought, well, what can I use that will solve that? So this is what I came up with, the mirror tile cut to size, it's removable from the print surface, from the metal plate, because you don't want to disrupt your tramming. You don't want to disrupt the knobs by taking the part off from the table while still on the bed. Take the clips off, remove the plate, put another mirror tile that is of the same thickness, set up already as you see here, and start the print. It takes literally, you know, one, two, three, and it's back to printing. Then I can deal with the plate that I just took off and remove the part any way uh, I choose. Doing it this way also makes removing the print simple. I, I literally do nothing uh, to get it to come off the bed, you know, because that's what I wanted. I didn't want to have to deal with removing it from the plate. I didn't want the difficulties of other means of doing that. So also, when I tram the bed, when I tram it, I use this. I use the paper filler gauge. I don't use that, okay? Because again, there's nothing to compensate for. So when I tram the bed, I tram it on the tape, on the corners of the tape, not out here. It's not printing out here, okay? As long as I have the tape around, you know, pretty much a, a good spacer between the print itself, then tramming on the corners of the tape because you have to take into consideration the thickness of the tape. And as you can see here, you see the skirt, you know, because a good skirt means that everything is indeed flat to the nozzle. You want it to be exactly the same distance from the print surface to the nozzle all the way across, all the way up and down, back and forth. Okay, so this is satisfies my needs. This satisfies what I'm looking to do. And again, other means just don't work for me. And I don't know, you know, I guess they work for others, but not me. I don't want to have to deal with it all the time. So this is the print head. All I want to do is get filament from here through here, straight, a straight shot, no arms, levers, or gizmos to redirect it because it's straight in straight through the extruder. This is the key. It's being pulled off the spool. It's being pushed to the bed as most printers do. Okay, it needs to deliver filament from here to here as simple as it can be. I mean, basics. You don't want to add anything between here and there that will disrupt that. So troubleshooting is way easier, okay, because all I have is the, is the Bowden tube delivery because the uh, extruder is mounted over here, the stepper is mounted over here, not on top of the print head. You don't want anything to disrupt print head, you know, and including gravity because gravity will always be pushing down on this and you don't want that uh, weight of all of this over here when it's just trying to deliver filament down to here, okay? so from here to there while the print head is moving, okay? That's just basic physics. So as long as you have a good Bowden tube setup, you know, as it was from the factory, it has to work. It's going to work. I mean, it's physically pushing and dropping filament through a heated hot end. This is a hot end. 
and it's specifically set up in a way that filament doesn't get soft here in the middle, uh, you know, in the heat sink, because then it'll start to mushroom and cause clogs. As long as you're getting good constant flow, uh, you know, according to factory specifications, that heat sink back there will stay, you know, as cool as it needs to be. So the filament itself, right here, is rigid, as rigid as it needs to be, right down here to the nozzle, right where the heated part of the uh, uh, print hot end is. It's a block of heat that melts the filament at a specific temperature to deliver it. It's actually fusing. You need good, proper FDM printing. Fusible deposition modeling. If it doesn't have the proper temperature and isn't being delivered properly, it's going to fail. Okay? It has to. I mean, it has no choice but to fail. But when you're set up like this, as I have right here, and again, I'm not saying go ahead and change what you do, because I'm not here to fix that. I'm here to show what this is doing, what my printer is doing. Okay? And as you can see, it's working right now. That's the plastic extruder, not the metal one, because the plastic one body is just as good as it will always be for the life of this printer. If that lever breaks, replace, replace the lever. It's like three bucks, takes like five minutes, no recalculating, no recalibration, no E-step changes, no change in step remote, no change in gear. You leave everything as it came. Change the arm. Like, like I say, three minutes, five bucks, and you're back to printing with no changes in anything else. Because you don't need to. It's printing like it's supposed to, as it always has, for over four years. Pretty much every day. I print every day. Okay. I don't know if you print or most users print every day. I've done over 3,500 plus STL files. And most of those files have been printed many times, several times. And the big issue here, the springs are stopped. Isn't that amazing? These are the same springs, no yellow springs, no chunks of rubber. It's, again, not required, and you can see it's not required. What you're looking at right now, okay? This is the, my setup. Again, you can set up your printers any way you, you find that works for you. Also, no heated bed right here. The set point to the bed is non-heated. That's the set point. Nozzle is 210. I use 210 for the PLA. That's what we're printing. So they say, well, why, why can't you just heat the bed? That's what it's for. Because I don't want to spend extra energy, extra time heating and cooling and worrying about a warped bed because the heated bed is causing the metal plate down here to work. I mean, I don't want to deal with that. Other people seem they, that like they want to deal with it. Okay. You can use glue stick. You can use the purple Elmer's glue stick. Okay. You can see there's no curling right here. No warping. It's flat to the bed. And it will remain there through the entire print. So anyway, I just want to show how my printer is doing. I'm not trying to, you know, open up a debate. Uh, this works for me. You can see it. I mean, it needs no explanation, as they say. It's just visually as what's happening right now, while it's printing. Not trying to hide anything. Quit. Don't look. All right. So anyway, that's it. Happy printing. And if any of this helps any new users, uh, I'm glad. Okay, because, I, like I say, I print all the time. In fact, my biggest problem is finding things to print. And again, I've done many, many prints successfully because I do it in this fashion. All right? And again, experiment, because you have to tram the bed properly. That's, that's key. I mean, if you don't tram the bed, nothing will work, no matter what you do, okay? No matter how you do it. If you can't master the tramming, leveling skill, you're going to have issues. That's, that's what you need to do. And then after you solve that, then you can move on and keep repeating what works. Just repeat what works. All right, happy printing.